Okay, I'll just begin. If anyone else comes late, they can always rewind the video and watch it from the start. Okay. So, we discussed linear combinations, we discussed the row picture and the column picture a bit last time. I want to go into a bit more detail and talk about how they are related. So let's start off from, and I said that we prefer the column picture, right? And so I'm going to start today from the view of columns. And for the rest of this lecture, um, I think we should restrict our, dis our uh, conversation to three-dimensional space, right? So we have three dimensions. You have x, y, and z. So this is x, y, and z, right? And so we're assuming that vectors in this three-dimension space, something that we call R3. We call it R3 because there are every point in it or every vector can, in it can be expressed as um, having some x component x1 and then x2 and then x3 or maybe um, x0, y0, z0 to define the three different directions, right? And so every vector in here can be expressed as a uh, you know, ordered pair of three different entries. So here's the first thing. So we, sp I left the last class asking the question, um, three different forms of the same question. The question was basically, how do we know we can solve a x equals to b? And at this point, I would just like to focus on when does the column space, right? So something. Let's just stick to linear combinations for now linear combinations. So these are the two things that I want to define again and talk about again. So column space. Um, notice that column space is for a particular matrix, right? So when we say column space, I mean the column space of a matrix, right? Okay. And so let's, let's talk about three different vectors. Let's say we have three vectors v1, v2, and v3. So I have v1, which is, v1 is a vector. It has, or let's just call it v vector, which has three entries, v1, v2, and v3. We have another vector, let's say u, which has three entries, u1, u2, u3. And I have this last vector w, which has three entries, w1, w2, w3, right? And these are all column vectors. Okay. Um, hello, Hanifa. Okay. So we have these three vectors, V, U, and W. And now let's start by talking about the linear combinations of these three vectors. So let's just start by just the vector V. And we, s we talk about, we wonder what um, the space um, filled by V. In other words, I just want to look at scalar multiples. If this is just one vector, I can't add it to another vector. I can just do scalar multiplication on it, right? And so if I do scalar multiplication on it, I say alpha, which is some number, times this vector, right? So let's say I had the vector 1, 2, 3. If v was, let's say, if v was the vector 1, 2, 3, then alpha times v will just be, alpha times v will just be um, alpha 2 alpha and 3 alpha, right? Okay, and so if this is some vector v, let's say this is, let's say this is that vector v, if I take scalar multiplications, scalar multiples of this vector, all I do is based on the discussion that we had last, uh, in the last class, or you can simply see that this alpha, we call it a scalar multiple because it just scales the vector. It just increases its length or decreases its length so I can perhaps, if alpha is greater than 1, if alpha is just equals to 1, I will just get the vector, the same vector v. If alpha is greater than 1, I will increase the size, I would have increased the size of v, right? If alpha is smaller than 1, I would have decreased the size of v. If alpha is perhaps less than 0, then, uh, then the vector goes in the opposite direction to v, right? So this goes in the opposite direction. So the point is if I take all possible scalar multiples of this vector v, then I will be getting some vector which is on this line, 
right? And so the space filled out by a single uh, vector is just a line, right? And this line, if you're talking about three dimensions, this if you're talking about three dimensions, then this line can be perhaps um, in the x direction, it could be in the y direction, so maybe this line looks like this, or this line looks like this, or it's some tilted line, right? It could be any kind of line, but it will just be one single line, okay? So the space spanned by the space, I will use another term, um, which I have not defined yet, but we can just think about it as just the same thing as filling up. So the space filled up by V or the space spanned by V is just the um, space that I can get by taking different scalar multiples of V. So if I have a single vector, then I just get a line, right? So that's this is the space that is filled out by a single vector. Okay, so that's the first thing. If at any point something is unclear or you have any confusions, just let me know in the chat and I will respond to that. <coughs> okay, now let's look about the, uh, let's talk about the space filled by, so let's talk about now the linear combination. Can a scalar multiple be zero? Definitely it can be zero, Daniel. So if I take alpha equals to zero, if I take alpha equals to zero, alpha v just becomes the zero vector. And the zero vector is just a point. It has no length. It has nothing in it. So if you're talking about three dimension, it's just the origin, right? You're just stuck at the origin. You can't extend this line anywhere. So zero is very much part of the space filled by. So in other words, your uh, question is any line, any line spanned by, spanned by a vector will pass through the origin, will pass through the origin because you can always set alpha equals to zero right that's an important thing okay so the next thing i want is i want linear combinations linear combinations of v and and u right Okay, so in this case, what I have is I have alpha v plus beta u, some number times v, some number times u. And we looked at an example yesterday. And so let's just see what we get in this case is, let's say I have a vector v um, that goes in this direction. And if I have a vector u that goes in some other direction, let's say this, then I can combine them what kind of space will I get when I combine two vectors? So if I take linear combinations of these, so a possible linear combination is alpha is one and beta is one, then what I get is V plus U. And we know how to do that, right? V plus U is simply take V, put U on its other end, or take U and put V on its other end, and we get this new vector alpha plus U, right? So that's one vector that I can get. I can even get two V plus 2u, which will be the same thing, but scaled um, by 2. I can also get 3v plus u. I can get v minus u. So what I will end up doing is I will end up filling a two-dimensional space, right? Sort of like a page by these two vectors, right? So the space filled up by two vectors, u, v, one possibility is, so one possibility is that it fills up, oops, it, the space filled is a plane. And again, this plane, just like Danya asked, if can a scalar multiple be zero, if I set alpha equals to zero and beta equals to zero, I know that I get the zero vector, which means this plane this plane passes through passes through the origin through the origin right so this is a plane that passes through the origin if i take all possible linear combinations of these vectors right okay that's one possibility but what if if i had a vector let's say if vec if you 
was in the same direction was in the same direction as v then what if u is in the same direction as v do i still get a plane do these two vectors if i take linear combinations of these two vectors can i get a plane let me know in the chat what you think so if i have two vectors let's say u is this vector v is this vector and u is in the same direction perhaps maybe something like this oops right so let's say u is in the same direction this whole thing is u what do i get if i take linear combinations of u and v now can i still span a plane and the answer to that is of course not because if i take any linear combinations the problem is that since u is in the same direction as v i know that i can get any vector in this same direction by just taking some alpha times v right so if u is in the same direction as v i can write that u is some scalar multiple of v in which case the the space that i get uv only give me a line they do not give me a plane i can't take linear combinations of uv to get something in some other direction it will only give me the line so it's possible that two vectors can combine linear combinations of two vectors can combine to just give you a plane and that happens when they are in the same direction right okay and lastly now let's talk about the linear combinations the linear combinations of v u and w right and so now i have three vectors the first possibility is let's say i take some simple case right for example i take v is equals to 1 0 0 u is equals to 0 1 0 and w is equals to 0 0 1 0. if you plot them out in the three dimensional space you will notice that i have given you a vector in each of these axis directions so 1 0 0 is the vector that goes in this direction 0 1 0 is the vector that goes in this direction and 0 0 1 is the vector that goes in this direction and if you've done a little bit of you know calculus or just geometry if you think about it i can get to any point i want if let's say i want to get to the vector 3 4 5 i just take 3 times the first vector plus 4 times the second vector and and 5 times the third vector and i will get 3 4 5 right so i can get any vector that i want if i want vector a b c if i want a b c which is in three dimensions i can get a times 1 0 0 0 b times 0 1 0 0 plus c times 0 0 1 so in essence what is happening is i can get any vector in this three dimensional space which means the space that i can fill up now by three vectors one possibility is i fill up the entire three dimensional space right Oops. so i fill up this entire three dimensional space and maybe i should just do this with a so i can get this entire three dimensional space and so of course three dimensional space is not a square i'm doing a little bit of an injustice so let's just make it into a three dimensional space right so you get any vector in this three dimensional space that you want okay any questions so far the next possibility is of course now this this was a nice case right where all of them were in the different direction what if i have the same problem as before i get um u and v are in the same direction so 
one problem that I can get. So this was the first possibility. The second possibility was second possibility is what if what if u and v u and w are in the same direction are in the same direction as v now of course if they're in the same direction as v then i can say v is some alpha times u alpha 1 and v sorry oops i can say u i mean it's correct as well so u is alpha 1 v and w is alpha 2 times v so they're both in the same direction which means i'm stuck again in the line right so I can get only the linear combination of three vectors will still give me a line because they're just in the same direction. So maybe if I take, um, so when I take a linear combination, so a linear combination can be A times V plus B times U plus C times W. When I take a linear combination, since they're both in the same direction as V, I can replace, I can say AV is B times alpha 1 V so I'm just plugging in this equation in this linear combination, right? So plus C times alpha 2 V, right? And if I combine them together, I, I can see that all of them are scalar multiples of V. So I can just take vector V common and I can do this because of um, vector addition rules. And I see that alpha plus B alpha 1 plus C alpha 2. So if I call this whole number some number alpha star then this whole thing is just alpha star times v because this is just a number right a was a number b was a number alpha 1 alpha 2 they were both they were all numbers so when you add all these numbers together you get another number which i am calling alpha star so you see any linear combination of these three vectors again gives me a vector that is just some scaling of v so you only get the, you, you're stuck in this line. You only get scalar multiples of V when you have this problem. So you can't fill up the, two di the three dimensional space. You can't even fill up any two dimensional plane in this problem, right? Um, and in this case, we have one more problem. There is another case that can happen, which is what if, what if W lies in the plane of u and v so for example u and v so u and v are not in the same direction u and v are not in the same direction so i've already seen that when they are not in the same direction i can get a plane so remember when we had two vectors i could get a plane by taking linear combinations of those two vectors so if i take a plane let's say this was the plane i was getting this plane that passes through the origin when I combined linear combinations of u and v so this was perhaps u this was perhaps v and u and this is the space that I was getting if now I have a problem where w w is some vector within this plane then I can't take linear combinations of u v and w to get to the third dimension you're still stuck because now w is actually a linear combination of v and u right because any vector in this space that's what we said any vector in this plane can be found by taking linear combinations of u and v right you can combine u and v in any form and get any vector and so if w lies in this plane it can be written as alpha v plus beta u and so if i now take if i now take let's say a v a linear combination of all three of them a v plus b w plus b u b u plus c w and i have this problem with me where w is just a linear combination i can write this as a v plus b u plug this in for w plus c times alpha v plus beta u and so now you see that you can combine the v's together which is a plus c alpha so i've just taken v common from these two terms and you can combine the u vectors together um, b plus c beta so again you see it's just the 
linear combination of these three vectors is actually just a linear combination of v and u. So you're still again stuck in the plane. So the possibilities, the three possibilities are that the linear combination alpha u, so alpha v plus beta u, and now, so these are different alphas and betas. So let's, okay. And so the point is that alpha v plus beta u plus uh, gamma w can give you three possibilities. It can fill R3 or it can be a plane in R3 or it can be a line in R3. So in this case we were getting, in the third case we were getting a plane, in the second case we were getting a line and in the first case we were getting the whole three-dimensional space. Okay. Does that make sense? <clears throat> Let me know if there are any questions, any confusions. So I left the last class and I left the question which was does the does the linear combinations does the linear combinations of vectors fill R3 and now we have some at least some idea of when that's possible. That's possible when they're not in the same direction or when one of them is not in the plane of the others, right? So it's only possible it, it will fill R3 when they're all going in some sort of different direction, right? And I have not defined what, how we know they're going in a different direction. There are ways to find if they're going in an other direction or they're still in um, one plane, right? Or they're just on one line. So we'll use these equations, these ideas of scalar multiples um, and linear combinations to find out whether they will span a line, a plane or a three dimensional space, right? But at this point, I want to switch to the other question, right? The other question was, the other question was, can we solve, can we solve AX equals to B for all B, right? And so now let's switch our view and let's think about that problem. So let's say we have a problem AX equals to B and at this point, I'm restricting my case to three by three systems, right? So three by three systems. And notice that in any system of equations, this is an unknown, so this is a known matrix. This is a known matrix, known vector, sorry. And we're looking for this unknown. We're looking for values that satisfy it. So let's, let's look at a system, right? So a system of equations I can write down let's say x1 is equals to b um, minus x1 plus x2 is equals to b2 and 0 minus x2 plus x3 is equals to b3, right? So this is a system of equations. I can write it. This is a very simple system of equations that I have written down. But let's try to write it down in matrix form. So the first column of this matrix will be the coefficients of x1, which is 1, minus 1, 0. The second column is 0, 1, minus 1. And the third column is 0, 0, 1, right? And I write it down as x1, x2, x3 is equals to b1, b2, b3, right? I have not written down what these b1, b2, b3 are. Um, perhaps I can write them. Let's say this can be 1, 2, 3, so I can take these are, but the idea is that these are known values, right? These are the only unknowns, okay? All right. So now the question is, <coughs> actually, you know what? Let's, let's just write some numbers here. So let's write one, two, three, so that we know what the problem is. So one, two, three. 
Okay, and so I talked about the column picture last time and let's immediately switch to that column picture by writing this as the linear combinations of the columns of A, right? So A x is equals to B can be written as the linear combination. The left hand side can be written as the linear combinations of the columns of A. So it's x1 times, oops, x1 times 1 minus 1 0 plus x2 times 0 1 minus 1 plus x3 times 0 0 1 is equals to 1 2 3 right and now we can uh, immediately switch back to what we were doing right before this right we were trying to find out the what space does the linear combination of three vectors fill up and we know that there are three possibilities that if I take linear combinations of these I, I might get all I might get the entire three-dimensional space I might get just a plane and I might just get a line right so the possibilities of the linear combinations of these vectors can either be this this or this right we don't know which case we are in yet we have no idea if these three vectors make a line of the or these three vectors make a space or these three vectors give the whole three-dimensional space right and so we'll have to find out what but the point is that we're looking for looking for x1 x2 x3 such that such that this vector b such that b such that the linear combination linear combination gives b right so i combine them in such a way take some of this take some of this take some of this and I get the right hand side vector, right? That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Now, maybe we can try to find those terms. Now, in this question, it's I think that's extremely easy. These The system that I gave you was extremely easy to solve. I can immediately see from the first equation is that x1 is equals to 1. The second equation tells me that x minus x1 plus x2 is 2. So I know that x2 is equals to 2 plus x1. So 2 plus x1, this gives me 2 plus 1. This is 3. And finally, the last equation tells me that x3 is equals to 3 plus x2. So x3 is equals to 3 plus x2, which gives me 3 plus 3 is 6, right? And now I can plug in these values. I can take this vector. I have this solution that I have take the linear combination Oops. let's take this copy this paste it here okay so I have these three vectors over here I know that I can take these x1 as 1 so this is just 1 times the first column 3 times the second column and six times the third column and let's see what we get so one times the first column is just one minus one zero plus three times the second column is zero three minus three plus six times the third column is zero zero six right and now I add them together by adding their first components together so one plus zero plus zero is one minus one plus three is two and minus three plus six is three and I see that I have indeed found the right linear combinations that is scale the first vector this was the first vector I just take scale it as by one so I just take v plus I take three times the second vector and I take six times the third vector uh, w and I get this right hand side vector b right okay and so now the question is still can I solve so I saw that I could solve it for 1, 2, 3. Can I solve it for any b, right? Or perhaps a simple question. Which b's can I solve, can I solve for, right? Okay. And so the idea is that on the left-hand side, you have some linear combination, right? So you have alpha. So I'm now taking this as vector v this is vector u and these are vector w right so i'm saying the columns of 
A are V, U and W and now so I have linear combination alpha V plus or rather let's take X1 V <coughs> sorry so what one did I have so let's take it alpha V right so alpha V alpha V plus beta U plus gamma W right these are just numbers I'm scaling them by is equals to B right and now the question is what vectors can I solve for which B's can I solve for so in this case it was easy to solve and it seems like if I had any other values let's say 5 6 or 7 the procedure would have been very similar right we just it doesn't seem like I will run into any problem at this point but if I look at it from the lens of linear combinations right so which linear combinations this is a linear combination the left hand side linear combination of v u and w right so it means now I already told you that there are three possibilities for the linear combinations of v u and w they can either span the three-dimensional space or they can span a plane or they can span a line right and here's the idea if their linear combination was the entire space then I should be able to solve for any B right because if I take any B if I take any B I know that this B is has to be in the three-dimensional space because this B is going to be just some vector B1 B2 B3 and it is in the three-dimensional space so it if if the linear combination gives me all the entire three-dimensional space then I can just combine them together to give me this V in some way I know there is I don't know what these alphas betas and gammas will be but I can find them by solving the system right so in this case it can be any B in this case however the linear combinations of these three give me this plane so as long as I have a B that is in this plane if the B is in this plane then I can solve for it but if the B goes outside the plane maybe something like this if the if this B comes outside the plane then I know that this these three combinations are stuck in this plane they can't come out of this plane which means I can't solve there is no combination that will give me this B right so in this case I only have I can only solve for only solve for B's inside the plane and similarly in this case if the linear combination gives me a line then as long as I have a vector B that is in the line I can solve for it but as soon as this vector goes outside if I get some vector B that is outside then I can't solve for it there is no linear combination that will give me this vector B because the linear combination is stuck in this line in this case the linear combination is stuck in the plane and in this case the linear combination spans the entire three-dimensional space right and so I can only solve in this case only solve for B's on the line right and so these are the three possibilities and so the question really is I will know immediately the answer to my question the question that I asked can I solve it for any B this question I've already answered right which B's can I solve for well the B's should be the the B's in the space filled by the linear combination the linear combination of the columns right but what about this problem can I solve it for any B only if the columns if the columns fill the entire three-dimensional space R3 so that's the answer to the question which B's can I solve for and uh, can I solve for any B and which B's can I solve for if I have some general matrix right so that's the idea let me know if you have any questions um, hello Sidra hello Ubaidullah thank you for joining us okay any confusions at this point <coughs> <coughs> Excuse
excuse me. Everything clear? Just let me know in the chat so I can move on. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Anifa. All right, so now let's, at this point, let's, you know, talk about solving some systems. We've talked in a bit of a detail and let's take an example and let's solve this system and let's try to figure out what kind of solutions I can get to this system. <clears throat> okay, let, now let's talk about, here's my system. I give you x1 minus x3 is equals to b1. x minus x1, okay, let's write this as x2 minus x1 is equals to b2 and x3 minus x2 is equals to b3 right this is a system of equations i can first align the x's and the right x's along the column so that i can write it in matrix form so this is x1 no x2 and minus x3 equals to b1 then i have x minus x1 plus x2 no x3 is equals to b2 and i have no x1 minus x2 plus x3 is equals to b3 so all i've done from this point to this point is i had a system of equations and i just aligned the x1s x2 and x3 so that i can easily write this in matrix form right so the matrix is going to be 1 minus 1 0 0 1 minus 1 and minus 1 0 1 right times x1 x2 x3 is equals to some constants p1 p2 p3 right okay let's try to solve this system of equations let's see what happens when i do is there some way i can solve this system so let's take one two three so i take b1 as so i take b1 as two i take b2 as minus 2 and I take b3 as 0 right so I'm trying to solve the equation the system which has the right hand side as 2 minus 2 0 this is my system and I can view the left hand side as a linear combination right so x1 times 1 minus 1 0 plus x2 times 0 1 minus 1 plus x3 times minus 1 0 1 right let's try to solve this system okay so this system gives me the following solution what can i do if i have this system can i solve this equation somehow so x1 minus x3 x1 minus x3 is equals to 2 the second equation is x2 minus x1 is equals to 2 so x2 minus x1 is equals to minus 2 and you will notice that at this point i'm just going back to the original form because i have not given you any way to use these matrix forms to solve this equation there is of course an easy way to do this but at this point because these are easy systems so let's just solve these systems of equations right so x3 minus x2 so x3 minus x2 is equals to zero and now notice that without even let's not worry about this one let's see what this gives me this this um this equation is giving me x3 is equals to x2 right and so now i can substitute this in some previous equation so i can say this equation i can make by substitution i can say x3 minus x1 is equals to minus 2 and x1 minus x3 is equals to 2 what happens when I try to solve this equation? I get x1 is equals to 2 plus x3, right? So I had x1 minus x3 equals to 2 
x3 minus x1 is equal to minus 2. This equation gives me x1 is equal to 2 plus x3. And if I substitute this in this equation, what do I get? I get x3 minus 2 plus x3 is equal to minus 2. And on the left hand side, I have x3 minus 2 minus x3 equals to minus 2 and something weird happens this becomes zero and or rather i get minus two equals to minus two now that doesn't give really gave me some numbers right i was trying to solve for x1 x2 x3 i was trying to find some combination that gives me the right hand side but i ended up in an equation that tells me minus two is minus two which is yeah, sure, minus 2 is the same as minus 2, but what's the value of x1? What's the value of x2? What's the value of x3? And somehow my substitution procedure that I was following, it failed, right? So what do I do at this point? Well, there's two things that I can do. The first thing that I can do is, you know, I can cheat a little bit. And I can cheat by taking the system and telling you that you don't even need to solve this system to find a solution, right? And the reason is, notice what's happening in the first column here and in this right-hand side. Over here, the, f the entries are 1, minus 1, 0, and over here, the entries are 2, minus 2, 0. And if you think about it, these are this is just a multiple of this, right? So 2, minus 2, 0 can be easily gotten if I just multiply this vector by 2, I get 2 times 1 minus 1, 0, and I get the right hand side, which is 2 minus 2, 0. Now, the problem is I didn't take anything for x2 and anything for x3. I don't want any contribution from them, because if I had any contribution for them, they will mess up my first entry or second entry or third entry. So I'm taking x2 to be 0 and x3 to be 0. So that's one solution. I got 2. So one of the solution is x1 is equal to 2, x2 is equal to 0, and x3 is equal to 0. And that's a solution of the system. That's the solution. Right? OK, but at this point, now I'm wondering if I found the solution, why didn't I found a solution by solving the system of equations? And so let's write down the system of equation once again and see what the problem was. The problem was, that when I combine them together, I got this, x3 is equal to x2. And notice that even in my solution, x2 and x3 are exactly the same. So now if I write, if I take these equations once again, let's take these equations and let's try to solve them, right? So, oops, let's try to solve them once again knowing that if I can put x1, so at this point I got x3 is equals to x2, and you know what, let's set x3 is equals to x2 equals to 0. So if I set x3 as x2 as 0, notice what happens in this equation. I get x2 minus x1 is equals to minus 2. If I plug in 0 here, I get minus x1 is minus 2, and I can cancel them together, the minus signs, and I get x1 is equals to x2, which was one of the solutions. So I got the same solution, but I, what I had to do was I had to fix some value. So I had to fix a value for x3, right? Or maybe you can think of it as fixing some value for x2. Now this makes me curious. Can I fix some other values for x3 and x2, right? So let's try to fix, you know, why not x3 and x2 can be made equals to 1. And in that case, I get the solution x1 is equals to, so I take again my second equation. My second equation was x2 minus x1 was minus 2. I have fixed these three variables to be, my, to be just 1. So 1 minus x1 is equals to minus 2. And so now I get um, 1 plus 2 is equals to x1. And so x1 is now equals to 3. And so x1 is 3. And I fixed the values for x2 and x1. So x2 is 1 and x3 is 1. And now this seems to satisfy the third equation and the second equation. And you know what? Let's just try to plug this in into this system of equations. So I take 
now I take this again let's take my system of equations and let's try to check if I get a solution by plugging in the values that I just received by fixing the value of x2 and x1 as x3 as 1 right so here's another attempt let's say I found the values were I found the values to be oops I have added a page here that I didn't want to add here let's do this here and let's plug it in here okay so I found some values x1 is equals to 3 x2 is equals to 1 and x1 is equals to 1 and let's try to find out what the linear combination using these numbers gives me so 3 times the first vector plus 1 times the second vector which is 0 minus 1 1 plus 1 times the third vector which is this and if I have to multiply this by 3 this is just 3 minus 3 and this and now let's just add these two together so 3 minus 1 is 2 minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2 and 0 minus 1 plus 1 is just 0 so what I found is another solution right in this case this this was a solution that I found but I have yet another solution x1 x2 x3 this is this is another combination that gives me a solution so it seems like I have one solution to be one sorry the first solution that I found was two zero zero the other solution that I found was three one one and it seems like there's nothing stopping me really from finding more solutions so if I fix x3 and x2 to be C right let's say I fix x3 if I say x3 is C then x2 will also be C and by solving the third equation that I have which is x2 minus x1 x2 minus x1 is equals to minus 2 if I you know I'm, I'm trying to generalize this I first fix them to be 0 then I fixed them to be 1 now I'm fixing them to be any constant right any constant C then the solution will be um, C minus x1 is equals to minus 2 and I can rewrite this as C plus 2 is equals to x1 so if I fix these two values as C x3 is C then x2 will also be C and this value will just be C plus 2 notice that this is exactly what's happening in this case as well this was 0 this was 0 and 0 plus 2 is just 2 this was 1 this was 1 1 plus 2 is just 3 right so any solution these are all the possible solutions all possible solutions of my system right and I have found this in a messy way I've done a lot of reasoning and I've done some fixing of values and there is a very easy way to get to the solution once we start talking about Gaussian elimination and once we start talking about um, solving systems using matrix um, LU factorization or Gaussian elimination this will be very easy to find but the idea is that I have given you a case in which you have multiple solutions or actually not even multiple there are infinitely many solutions I can take C to be any real value right so I have infinitely many solutions now let's try to think about how that could happen right how how is it that I'm getting infinitely many solutions right okay so let's bring out the system the linear system of equation let's try to solve the same system right I'm going to take the same left hand side I think I have it copied and let me just paste this here and instead of solving this for the system that I had I now want to solve it for I'm changing the right hand side so the right hand side at first you know in the system that we were trying to solve the right hand side was 2 minus 2 0 I'm now going to change that I'm going to look at 0 0 0 I'm just going to take the 0 vector and this is called this is ax equals to 0 right this is called the homogeneous system of equations so when you have the right hand side to be 0 so when b is equals to 0 you get the homogeneous system and let's try to solve this homogeneous system of equations right 
Okay. Let's see what happens when I try to solve this. So I had x1, x1 minus x3 is 0, x2 minus x1 is 0, and x3 minus x2 is 0. And this immediately, notice that what was happening in only the last equation of my problem, right? This problem, this equation gave me x3 equals to x2, it's now happening in all of these equations. This gives me x1 is x3. This gives me x2 is x1. This gives me x2 is x3. Which means the solution to this system is x1 is equals to x2 is equals to x3. But what is the value? And I don't get any particular value, which means I can take them to be any value I want as long as I take the same value, right? So the first thing that I can do is I can take, you know what, let's take x3 equals to 0. And for a homogeneous system, if I make this 0, and if I make this 0, and if I make this 0, all of them 0, that's of course going to be a solution to the right-hand side, because 0 plus 0 plus 0 is just going to give me 0. So this system, even if I hadn't found this, by the way, even if I hadn't said x1 is equals to x2 is equals to x3, notice that I can always set them to be 0, even if I hadn't gotten that term, and I still get 0. So this solution, this system always has, always has trivial solution. And by trivial solution, I mean the vector 0, 0, 0. All of them 0, 0, 0. No, I've, I've written it in um, row form, but it's just the column vector, right? So zero, 0 times this, 0 times this, 0 times this, and I get the same thing, right? But this equation seems to tell me that if I take any vectors that are any values that are same so if I set this to be 1 and this to be 1 and this to be 1 I might get the same solution and it's true right so if I take one of this just one of this one of this one of this the first row gives me 1 minus 1 the second row gives me minus 1 plus 1 the third row gives me minus 1 plus 1 all of them will give me 0 0 0 right let's let's do an example immediately to see how this is happening if I take if I take this to be 2 if I take this to be 2, 2, and 2, take all of them as the same values, then the first row gives me 2 plus 0 minus 2. So 2 plus 0 minus 2. The second row gives me minus 2 plus 2 plus 0. Minus 2 plus 2 plus 0. And the third row gives me 0 minus 2 plus 2. And this is all equals to 0, 0, 0. So this system, this Ax equals to 0, has solutions of the form C, 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 right? These are infinitely many solutions, infinitely many solutions, okay? And now let's go back and see how this is connected to Ax equals to B. So let's say I, ha I want to solve Ax equals to b, right? And let's change this b. Let's not take it minus 2 to 0. Let's take this to be 1, 2, 3, okay? And now I ask a question. The question is, does it have a unique solution? Or infinitely or infinitely many solutions, right? That's the question that I want to ask. Now, let's see what happens. When will it have? Let's suppose, let's suppose, so actually let's switch back to, let's take, so let's take minus 4, so 4 minus 4, 0, right? And now let's say I don't want to solve this system. I just want to know how many solutions it will have. Okay, let's say I have one solution to this, right? So, for example, this was the system that I was trying to solve, and I can immediately find a solution by checking out that the first vector, so I want to now solve this system, is equals to 4 minus 4, 0, and I can use the same trick that I used in the first case, which was that I have found, I can see that this 
first column is just the vector that I need because the right hand side is just a scaled version of this column. So if I take x1 to be 4 and x2 to be 0 and x3 to be 0 then I will have a solution to this problem. So I have at least found one solution. So I know by the way it's possible that you find no solutions to a problem as well but we haven't got into that case yet. So one possibility I found one solution found one solution which is x1 x2 x3 is equals to 4 0 0 that's one solution now at this point I can do the same procedure I can try to find other solutions that I found like for previously when I found one solution I tried to find another solution by fixing some values right so I had found one solution then I tried to find another solution I'm not going to do that now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this ax equals to 0 so let's say I have a solution right so let's call this vector x star x star right so one solution I know that a times x star gives me this b so let's call this b it gives me b okay now let's I know that this ax equals to 0 has infinitely many solutions right let's call this let's call this x c right this these were the infinitely many solutions of ax equals to 0 I want to check something what if I use I use x star plus x c I know that this is a solution to my homogeneous this is my solution to my ax equals to b and I know this was a solution to ax equals to 0 right so now I take this and I say let's multiply multiply by a then I get a times x star plus x c then this gives me a times x star plus a times x c and I can immediately now use the facts that I know the fact that I knew was that this ax star is just p and axc is just equals to 0 because this is a solution to this problem right if it's a solution to ax if this xc is a solution to this problem then when I plug this back into this I get 0 so axc is equals to 0 which means this gives me b now let me write that together that ax star plus xc is equals to b and immediately notice that what you've gotten are more solutions to ax equals to b these are more solution another solution so another solution to ax equals b let's let's see how that's happening right so i knew that ax x star was equals to 4 0 0 I knew that xc was equals to c c c let's take one example let's take x1 right let's set c equals to 1 c equals to 1 gives me 1 1 1 and now let's add them together so x star plus xc gives me 5 1 1 and now let's try to plug this in my system so I take 5 times this I take 1 times this and I take 1 times this and what do I get 5 minus 1 gives me 4 minus 5 plus 1 gives me minus 4 and 0 minus 1 plus 1 gives me 0 and so you found another solution by just taking x star plus xc so you can take by the way you can take xc to be any value right you can take ccc you can take 2 2 2 and so what you have gotten is the following this is the fact that I was building towards is that if ax equals to 0 has infinitely infinitely many solutions and if I have a solution x star to ax equals to b then 
So this is a theorem that I'm writing. So if I have infinitely many solutions to this problem, and if I have found just one solution to this problem, then I can find infinitely many solutions, many solutions to ax equals to b by adding by adding x star to solutions of ax equals 0, right? And that's exactly what we did right now, that I, I had some solution to ax equals to 0, I added them up to my solution of b, and I know that this is immediately clear, right? So if, if this solution was x prime and this solution was x star, right? So let's, let's uh, make this more precise. Again, I'm doing the same argument, but this argument is clear. That is, if this had a solution x prime and this had a known solution x star, then if I add x prime to x star and I multiply it by a, I get ax prime plus ax star, which gives me, I knew that x prime was a solution to ax equals to 0, so a times x will give me 0, plus b, so I have another solution. So a times x prime plus x star gives me a solution for so this. This is a new solution to this problem ax equals to b, right? Okay, I'm going to pause for a few minutes for you to digest this, for you to think about this. Let me know if you have any questions. By the way, at any point in the class, if you think that I'm going too fast or if you want me to repeat something or if you want to take maybe a five minute break I will stop and let you um, digest the material so that you can keep up. So the last time I was teaching this course um, it takes so the Stephen Leon books takes some time to build up these issues and uh, get to the point where we can talk about this fact or get to talk about the connection between ax equals to 0 and ax equals to b. What I like about um, Gilbert Strang's book is that it initially immediately introduces the issues that you need to get to these discussions, right? And so it gets to the meat of the matter much quickly than the other book. And really all of these issues, linear combinations, homogeneous systems ax equals to 0, ax equals to p. These are concepts that are, you know, recurring themes in linear algebra. So the faster we get to the meat of these issues, the better. Okay, so either no one's listening or you don't have any questions, in which case I will just move on and discuss the problem, the same problem one more time but from a different lens, right? Okay, let's take this and let's beat this example to the death, right? Let's, let's discuss all of the issues that are coming up in this system and let's do this one more time. So here was the system is equals to is equals to p1 b2 p3 and now let's talk about the so these are the columns right so these are columns of a and now i want to talk about the column space column space of a which is just a fancy word that i'm giving to the linear combinations linear combinations of columns of A, right? So if let's call this to make it clear that these are columns of A, let's call this column 1, column 2, column 3 and let's write this as equation as x1 c1 plus x2 c2 plus x3 c3 is equals to this vector P, right? And now let's try to answer the question. Does it form a three-dimensional space? Does it form 
a plane or does it form a line right okay so let's let's first look at x1 and x2 sorry c1 and c2 so c1 is the vector c1 is the vector 1 minus 1 0 and c2 is the vector 0 1 and minus 1 and let's ask are they in the same direction are they in the same direction what do you think do you think that these vectors can be in the same direction it immediately if you look at these vectors notice that if they were in the same direction then I would get so if they were in the same direction let's say they are in the same direction so let's assume they're in the same direction if they were in the same direction then c2 would be some alpha times c1 right i'm trying to find out if that's on the same line or not if they were in the same direction then alpha c2 is equals to alpha times c1 in which case 1 minus 1 0 would be equals to alpha times oops i've written the wrong matrix strong vector so 0 1 minus 1 is alpha times c1 so alpha times c1 is simply alpha minus alpha and 0 and notice I immediately have a problem first line is fine first line tells me well first time tells me alpha is 0 the second line also tells me alpha is minus 1 that's a contradiction that's a problem and notice the last line also tells me something weird the last line tells me minus 1 is equal to 0 which is also a contradiction which means this assumption that I've made this is sort of a proof by contradiction I assume that they were in the same direction I got a contradiction which means my assumption was wrong which means c1 and c2 c1 and c2 are in a different direction which means I have at least ruled out that the column space will be a line it can't be a line because if it were a line if it were a line then I would have gotten all vectors in the same direction so at least I know that c1 with c2 so c1 with c2 gives me a plane so at least this much i know for a fact that this linear combination c1 and c2 will give me at least the two-dimensional plane now let's ask the third question the second question which is is oops, is c3 inside the plane or outside because if c3 is inside the plane then i'm stuck in the plane the only way i can expand the whole three-dimensional space is for c3 to be outside the plane right now let's say c3 is inside the plane right let's assume let's assume c3 is inside the plane okay so if c3 is inside the plane then i know that c3 will be some linear combination alpha of c1 plus alpha of c2 and so let's write down the equations i have so c3 is just minus 1 0 1 is equals to alpha c1 c1 is 1 minus 1 0 plus c2 this should be a different alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 1 alpha 2 and c2 is just 0 1 minus 1 and now i want to add these two in a way that i get this vector and now notice i can do this very quickly because the first entry of this summation is minus 1 the first entry of this second column is just 0 that is there is no contribution coming from the second vector to the first entry which means if i want this to be minus one i will need to set alpha one to be minus one because there is no other way for me to get minus one over here similarly in the third row notice that there is no contribution coming to the third component of this vector from alpha from c1 so if i want c1 here let me just um write that down in a better form so let's just complete the argument so if I want some contribution if I want this third entry to be 1 I need to make this product 1 so let me just say show you what I'm saying 
I am saying the following, the first entry is just alpha 1, if I add these together, right, alpha 1 times 1 plus 0, the second entry is minus alpha 1 plus alpha 2, and the third entry is alpha 2 minus alpha 2, right. So the first row is telling me that alpha 1 is minus 1, the third row is telling me alpha 2 is minus 1, and now I can just check whether this holds, right. So minus alpha 1, so minus times minus 1 plus alpha 2 was also minus 1 and this gives me 1 minus 1. So from this row I found alpha 1, from this row I found alpha 2 and in this one I just plugged in to check that this was consistent or not. And so this satisfies this alpha 1 and this alpha 2. If I take alpha 1 to be minus 1, alpha 2 to be minus 1, I get this third vector. Right, so the solution is the solution is minus 1 and plus minus 1. So what do I know from this? It, it tells me that C3 was inside the plane because I found some value for alpha 1, I found some value for alpha 2 that in conclusion I can say C3 can be written, written as a linear combination. combination the third column can be written as a linear combination of column 1 and column 2 which means it's inside the plane it hasn't left the plane there is there is some combination so min so if this was let's say let's draw a picture this was c1 and this was c2 right let's zoom into this picture let's look at it so if alpha this was c1 and this was c2 and what i got is that I take minus times this this vector and I take minus times this vector and add them together I get this vector which is this C3 their combination gives me C3 this was minus C1 this was minus C2 and C3 tells me this tells me that C3 is inside the plane and so what does that tell me it tells me that the column space it tells me the column space excuse me it tells me the column space of c1 c1 c2 c3 or rather sorry not the column space of c1 c2 c3 the column space of matrix a gives a plane and now here's the question which B's can I solve the equation AX equals to B for? And the answer is you can solve for those B's which are inside this plane. So B's that are inside the plane. If they're not inside the plane, you won't be able to find a solution. And let me just show you an example of when you have no solution for this problem, right? Okay. So let's do one more case. Let's say I have a, so I know that the, this plane, this plane that I have as the column space of A is given to me by alpha 1 C1 plus alpha 2 c2 right and alpha 1 was 1 minus 1 0 sorry c1 was 1 minus 1 0 and c2 was 0 1 minus 1 right okay let me try to give you a b for which you'll have a problem so let's say b so i give you a b which is hmm, f and Okay, let's try to be smart about this. So let's take this is one. So this is two. And dum 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 hmm. one. And this is two. And I should have alpha one. The two minus two. Let's let's take this to be three. And let's try to see if I can solve the system or not. Okay. Let's for the you know 50th time let's copy this and let's try to solve this okay so this gives me equals to 
2, 3, 2. And let's try to solve this now. So the first equation told me that x1 minus x3 is equal to 2. The second equation told me that x2 minus x1 oops, dun, dun, dun. x2 minus x1 gives me 3. And the third equation told me that x3 minus x2 is equal to 2. And so let's try now to solve this equation. Let's take this. So this was equation 1, this was equation 2, and this was equation 3. And now let's try to solve this. And again, we're doing naive, messy methods, but we'll get to easier methods of solving systems of equations later. So let's try to solve it. What do I get? I get x3 is equal to 2 plus x2. Let's plug this into 2. So let's call this 3 star. Let's plug this into 2. I get, uh, sorry, let's plug this into 1 x1 minus x3 is equal to 2. I know that x3 is 2 plus x2, so I can write x1 minus 2 plus x2 is equal to 2. So I get x1 minus 2 plus x2 is equal to 2, which is x1 minus x2 is equal to 4. And now let's take the second equation, which was x2 minus x1 is equal to is equals to x2 minus x1 was equals to 3. Now this is this these two equations if you notice are indicating to me that there is a problem. You can try to solve this equation by the way. Let's let's try to naively solve them. So x1 x1 was equals to 4 plus x2 and let's plug this in here. So x2 minus 4 plus x2 is equals to 3 and this I get x2 minus 4 minus x2 is equal to 3 and immediately notice there's a problem x2 x3 cancelled minus 4 is equal to 3 this is a contradiction minus 4 is not equal to 3 there's no no way I can change x1 x2 and x3 to get x minus 4 to be equal to 3 this is a contradiction which means if I try to solve this system I get a contradiction which means this system has no solution and the reason I indicated to you that I can immediately see a problem is because notice that the left hand side of these two are almost the same there's only a sign difference right so if I multiply this multiply this by minus 1 what do I get I get the equation x1 minus x2 is equals to minus 3 which is again in direct contradiction with the first equation the first equation is telling me if you sub subtract x2 from x1 you get 4 the third equation is telling me if you subtract x2 from x1 you get minus 3 this is again a contradiction so in this case you get no solution right that's the first thing if you get a contradiction you've gotten a no solution and what's the reason the reason is that we have n we've actually taken a b the b vector is outside the span right this term that I'm using or outside let's just write let's just not confuse you let's write is outside the plane that is covered that is covered by the columns of A right so the columns of A were filling up like I told you the columns of A were filling up this plane and if I have a B that is outside this then there is no linear combination because these three vectors are stuck in this space I can only go to any point in this plane there is no combination that will take me outside the plane so therefore the reason is that the B was outside the plane that is covered right okay any questions confusions Okay, so let's let's try to summarize all of what we've said. I've said a lot of things and let's just give a short little summary. At least for three by three systems, what we've found so far. We found that the linear combinations, the linear combination of three vectors 
can give a plane can give a line a plane or the whole of r3 or the whole of r3 the other thing that we found today was that the answer to the question when can i solve ax equals to b and the answer to that was when b the answer is when b is in the column space column space of a another question when can i solve ax equals to b for any b well if you want to solve it for any b you must make sure because any b can come from any vector in r3 that means that's only possible when b is in the column space so the column space column space should cover should fill up so the column space should fill up the entire r3 right so if i can find out a way to um if i have a way to find out that my column space fills out the sp entire space r3 or not i can immediately answer the question can i solve for any b or not right so that's the answer another thing that we thought about was the relation so what about what solutions are possible for ax equals to 0 well the first solution that we found is always that it always has the trivial solution and that's and for this it's possible that it's a unique solution so there are cases in which you only get the trivial solution and no other solution but you can also get infinitely many solutions right you can get infinitely infinitely many solutions but this because we know that trivial solution is always included so many infinitely many solutions including including the trivial solution and what was the trivial solution the trivial solution was just 0 0 0 so infinitely many solutions including the trivial solution right that was another important thing the other thing that we discussed was the connection connection between ax equals to 0 and ax equals to p right and what's that connection the connection is when ax equals to 0 has infinitely many solutions right so that's first condition plus another condition which is ax equals to p has a solution x star if i have these two facts so if i have these two facts if both of these are true that i have infinitely many solutions for this and if i have a solution x star for this then i can find infinitely infinitely many solutions for ax equals to b notice that this is really important you have to find at least one solution because if you can't find it's possible it's also possible in the case in the case where ax equals to b has no solution right for example the case that i just showed you when b was outside the column space this is useless to me because if it has no solution if i didn't find any particular solution i can't build more solutions to build solutions i need at least if i want to do x star plus x prime i need at least one solution so the possibilities for ax equals to b so the possibilities for ax equals to b is either it has no solution it either has the unique solution or it has infinitely many solutions and i'm going to leave you with a question which is when does ax equals to b have a unique solution 
right? That's the question that I'm asking. When does Ax equals to b has a unique solution? And the answer to that problem lies over here, right? That if I have one solution, I can build infinitely many solutions from x primes, <coughs> right? Now x primes were the infinitely many solutions of Ax equals to 0. But if I don't have any solutions, notice that Ax equals to 0, there are two possibilities. Ax equals to 0 either can have trivial solution or infinitely many solutions. If I have only the trivial solution, let's say, so let's consider, consider x star Ax equals to 0 only has trivial solution. 0, 0, 0. Now, if I want to, now let's say Ax equals to b 